Hi, this is Kevin. Today we're going to learn about what MVC, MVP, and MVVM are, and the advantages and disadvantages between them. I'll use the 1939 movie Wizard of Oz to illustrate the differences between the different models, and hope I don't get sued for copyright issues. The scene I'll focus on in the movie is when Dorothy meets the wizard for the first time. She approaches what looks like a large head, with a lot of fire and smoke. How does this relate to MVC, MVP, or MVVM? Let's take a look at each one and see. Starting with MVC. MVC stands for Model View Controller. It was first introduced in the 1970s as part of Smalltalk, a super ancient programming language. It's still used today as a design pattern in many different ways, in both UI components or for designing web applications. Let's suppose the Wizard of Oz set up his wizard equipment in a model view controller pattern. How would that look like? Well, you first have the hologram of the wizard's head. Then you have Dorothy who sees the hologram. When Dorothy speaks, she thinks she's speaking to the large wizard head, but her voice is actually being heard by the man behind the curtain. That man then enters data into a computer system that stores information and makes the wizard hologram move. In this case, Dorothy is the user, the wizard head is the view, and the man behind the curtain is the controller. The ancient computer system that stores what the wizard head should do is the model. The model is where the data of the application resides. It is only updated by the controller. The view renders the model in a particular format, and the controller is the piece that the user interacts with. It updates the model and sends it to the view. The advantages of MVC is that it's easy to separate and test each component such as model, view, and controller. Each component uses the single responsibility principle and does only one thing. The disadvantage of MVC is that there is a tight interdependency between the model, view, and controller. If you change the model, for example, chances are you'll have to change the controller and the view. Another small disadvantage is that the view is passive and simple. There's no UI logic defined anywhere. MVP, which stands for Model View Presenter and not Most Valuable Player, was created sometime in the 90s. It really took off when Microsoft started incorporating it into its .NET framework in around 2005 or 2006. MVP is meant to be a design pattern for user interfaces. It's similar to MVC, but instead of a controller, we have something called a presenter. What is a presenter? Well, it's a class whose main task is to massage the model and present it properly to the view. Let's see how this works if the Wizard of Oz constructed this wizard hologram using MVP. Let's suppose the Wizard of Oz set up his wizard equipment in an MVP pattern. Well, you have the hologram just as you did before, then you have Dorothy who sees the hologram of the wizard's head. Now when Dorothy speaks, she thinks she's speaking to the large wizard head, and she is. The man behind the curtain is actually in a soundproof room nearby, and he can only hear Dorothy from the microphone placed near the top of the wizard's head. Pretend that there's a tiny microphone there somewhere. The man behind the curtain then hears Dorothy's voice through the microphone, and makes the wizard's head move using sophisticated levers and gizmos. The man behind the curtain also enters data into the computer system that stores information about the current state of the wizard's head. In this case, Dorothy is the user, the wizard head is the view, the man behind the curtain is the presenter, and the computer system that stores what the wizard head should do is the model. The model is where the data of the application resides. The view renders the data and keeps track of the user's actions and informs the presenter. The presenter takes data from the model and updates the view so that it knows what to display. It keeps track of the state of the view and figures out what to do when it receives input from the view. The advantages of MVP are that the model and the view are separated and easily testable. The disadvantages of MVP are that some tight coupling between the view and presenter and presenter and the model exists. So, interfaces are required to reduce the coupling. Another disadvantage is that if you're not careful, you might end up having presenters that contain a lot of code. The presenter could end up doing most of the work on the page if you do not split them up into smaller classes. 
MVVM stands for Model View View Model. It was invented by Microsoft in around 2006 and it's used in its WPF and Silverlight based applications. It has since been used by other UI libraries and frameworks. It's conceptually different from MVC and MVP in that it tries to solve the drawbacks of MVP. Let's see how this works if the Wizard of Oz constructed his wizard hologram using MVVM. Let's suppose the Wizard of Oz set up his wizard equipment in a model view view model pattern. How would that look like now? Well, you first have the wizard hologram. Then you have Dorothy, who sees the wizard's head. When Dorothy speaks, she thinks she's speaking to the large wizard head. And she is, just like in the MVP model. The thing is, the wizard head hologram is sending Dorothy's voice to the man behind the curtain, who is located in a hot air balloon somewhere far away over Kansas. He updates the record keeping system that is also in another location, say, I don't know, Oklahoma. The man behind the curtain only updates certain aspects of the wizard head, like making it blink or spit fire, only when it needs to be updated. This also updates what needs to be updated in the record keeping system. But Dorothy doesn't know this. All she knows is that she's talking to the hologram, who she thinks is the wonderful Wizard of Oz. In this case, Dorothy is the user, the wizard head is the view, the man behind the curtain, who is actually in a balloon far, far away, is the view model, and the ancient computer system is, you guessed it, the model. The model is where the data of the application resides. The view renders the data and keeps track of the user's actions and informs the view model. The view model takes the data from the model and updates the view so that it knows what to display. Now there's one thing that the MVVM model has that MVC and MVP do not have, and that is that it uses data binding and UI events to potentially signal changes in the view and the model. Some of the drawbacks of the MVP model are solved in that the view model is not tightly coupled to the view or the model. This makes testing easier. The view model can manage multiple views, so the man behind the curtain, who is now in his balloon, can actually manage multiple wizard heads in different cities. Scary thought. The disadvantages are that the data binding that's needed can be complex and can make debugging harder. Here's a simple example of MVVM written in Angular, a popular JavaScript library for client-side applications. This small app records a list of items to do. The HTML is the view. There are bindings here to the form, so that when it is submitted, Angular calls the addToDo method, which is located in the view model, which is just a function. The view model contains a list of to-dos, which is a simple array of objects. So when addToDo is called, it adds a new to-do object in the list. Again, just a simple example of MVVM. Well, there you have it. MVC, MVP, and MVVM. I hope this has helped shed some light on the differences between those three approaches to UI design. If you want to learn more about software and software architecture, please hit the like and subscribe button below. I hope you had a good day, and I'll see you in the next video.